And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have one, two, three good brothers. Ha 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 ha! This is a emergency slash special episode because, no, this is not Sunday. We are not in the time warp, and anybody I see dancing the time warp... Um, you will be kill hauled. But we have to do the time warp again. <laughs> you know, funny story. Funny story. Since today is St. Pat's, um, some one of my co one of my coworkers come um comes up to me and says, "Wait, wh why aren't you wearing green? Don't you know that? Don't you know you'll get pinched?" I all I said was, "You don't pay enough for life insurance to pinch me." <laughs> and if you have somebody else pinch me, you're going to be an ex you're going to be an accessory to assisted suicide. <laughs> there are certain and benefits to being as tall as I am when ev when everyone else in the building is five foot nothing. There's also certain benefits to monk not being near me on St. Patrick's Day, not wearing green. <laughs> Well, you wouldn't do, you wouldn't pinch simply be, simply because you've got more interesting ways to mess with me. Exactly. <laughs> but as you can see, this week the the subject matter is G4, which we call the throwback without an arm. Now, before I hand this off to Shades to get a, to get a bit of the preamble, I want to say that I had been have I had this in the back burner for several weeks. And I had, I had discussed a bit of the G4 situation the last time that I was on the stream of corruption with Lord Nurgle. However, in light of recent events that we will get to, I realized that I needed to accelerate my plans. And thus, an audible had to be called. So, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, the audible. <laughs> Indeed. So, Brother Shades, set the scene for us, please. I would be glad to, my friend. And folks, even though it was, wasn't my idea, I, I I requested this preamble because, quite frankly, I have a pers I have a personal history with G four. Not like directly, but it's just, I grew up with G four mm -hmm. during the, when it was first coming out. For those who have not heard of the original G four, this was a channel that was lost. This was a television channel that was launched originally back in uh, in April of two thousand and two by Comcast. The whole idea was to be a similar channel to its rival tech tv but geared towards gamers and basically going for the mtv demographic always a smart move right out the gate by the way right <laughs> and what they did is well first of all most interestingly they did they started the channel this channel launched with a week-long marathon of pong to give you an idea of how original these guys are when it comes to creativity <laughs> a week-long marathon of Pong was actually novel enough to get them a fuck ton of attention, though. It did. It mm -hmm. certainly did. So, and they started off with a handful of interesting programming that they had created uh, for this thing with stuff like uh, Cheats, uh, Judgment Day, uh, Portal, which criminally underrated show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I personally have problems. I personally said that show never reached its conclusion. It got canceled. Uh, but and as time went on, it added stuff like more popular stuff uh, like Code Monkeys, which was their own original animation series, which was actually pretty fun. I loved it. <laughs> and and other things of the sort. But as time went on, they actually, you know, we mentioned before that they were trying to create something like similar to the rivals at Tech TV. Well, lo and behold, in uh, 2004, they would acquire Tech TV and merge the two into one channel, G4 Tech TV bringing on board a lot of their care, uh, shows and creating their own shows from the original hosts. For example, taking Kevin Pereira of the Screensavers and adding in Olivia Mund to create Attack of the Show, which ended up being one of the most popular shows on the sh uh, on the channel. Second, maybe only to the ever-popular X-Play. Mm -hmm. Let, let's be honest here, though. The reason Attack of the Show got so popular was all of the dick jokes they made with Olivia Mund. Oh, my fucking Christ. They Did they ever... Like I'd fucking say, hot dog jokes and everything else. I'd say that and the f and the fact that um it w that um when everybody hated Jack Thompson, 
they actually managed to get him on to, to at the very least, answer his critics, which is why, for as much of a shit as Jack Thompson ha it was, and still is, I have more respect for him than I do for a lot of the modern Karens. More respect for Jack Thompson than Anita Sarkeesian. You heard it here first, people. That's you know what? hard pill to swallow wrong. there. As, as, as much of a shit as he was, he was at least willing to take his ass kicking. Although he was delusional in thinking that he didn't get an ass kicking, but that's a different story. Bullies always think that they won even when they lost. Oh, yeah. I know. Anyway, moving back on here. Now, this went on for a few years. It was doing rather well during this time, but in 2006, some uh, decisions started getting made that inevitably doomed the channel. Mainly how apparently they decided to consolidate several of their channels, G4, E, and Style, into a new group, basically moving all of their channels into one, into one office area, which caused some problems. <laughs> and, be, and the other big problem was is that the uh, head of that department, Ted Harbert, decided that they wanted to expand the focus of the channel because a channel completely dedicated to gamers they felt was too narrow. Oh, did that fuck things up? <laughs> <laughs> Don't because th that's when they started adding a whole bunch of crazy shit onto the channel that had nothing to do with G4's original lineup. When you're seeing, you know, seeing stuff like Star Trek: The Next Generation and Heroes, okay, you know what? It's geek shit. That's cool. But when you start seeing cops on G4, that's when you've done fucked up. <laughs> cops and cheaters. Yeah, fucking cheaters. What the fuck? I However, think, I seem to recall at one point they it they um they were actively I don't know if they were actively considering or if it was on there for a cup of coffee, but the Man Show, which it was on there. Who was okay? Years. So I wasn't I wasn't hallucinating regarding that. <laughs> no, no, you no, were not. It was it wasn't a terrible fever dream, monk. This was reality. Terrible, <laughs> horrible reality. Yes, yes, it is. I was not on Ayahuasca that week. I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> However, that doesn't mean that G4 didn't have some saving graces because it was also during that time that they started tapping into a lot of Japanese programming with stuff like Unbeatable Banzuke and a little show called uh, <laughs> Sasuke in Japan, but as we can know it, Ninja Warrior. And then yes, we folks. Got <laughs> if you remember, if you, you, I'm sure a lot of you know of American Ninja Warrior. This is where it got its start. Mm hmm. Mm <laughs> hmm. And uh, I, I will take Makoto Nagano over any of the crap that we saw on American Ninja Warrior any day of the week. And that's saying a lot because I've got con buddies who performed on that show. Shout out, shout out to Shinobi. <laughs> and to be, to be fair, around that same time, Spike was doing MXC, which was a very, inf very, be very so bad it's good dub of Takashi's Castle. Yeah. So it was kind of a thing, but unlike uh, MXC, which took, which was kind of done as a gag dub, mm -hmm. Ninja Warrior was done a lot more seriously, even when comedy actors were performing on the uh, on the obstacle course. So it was kind of that back. It was kind of that uh, counter to MXC. Mm -hmm. But eventually, because of all of the missteps they had taken, the channel started losing ratings. And it started to fall apart roughly around 2010 when DirecTV dropped it from its lineup and before long other network, other uh, cable services started dropping it, including the original uh, one that created it, Comcast. Yeah. Before you... finally completely dying roughly around 2014. Mm -hmm. If you thought Comcast was ever good at any point ever, um, this just proves that you are wrong and you should feel bad for ever thinking that. Now, yeah. <sighs> allow me to play a little bit of Devil's Advocate regarding the dropping. Give me a minute. Hold on. Got to do something. Dude, dude, come on. Get in there. Go! Got that coming. <laughs> but the reason why G4 was able to get away with what could be considered a very niche channel was because around this time... A lot of a lot of cable and satellite companies were flirting with the whole on-demand thing that was that was quite the wave around that time, and 
the thing the thing is is that the the idea is bu is buying certain channels a la carte instead of buying it as part of a package. Which yeah. on paper on paper for the time what isn't a bad thing. That's that's also where you started to see the earliest versions of um the pre the predecessor to streaming packages as we know them with the uh, with the on demand rental stuff. Um <laughs> Granted, granted, my primary exposure to that kind of thing was um, the anime network, but there was also stuff. There was also stuff like um, vi like various sh various shows and ver and various music on demand, as well as um, the Fed doing the twenty four seven thing. Yeah, and also during this time, while the internet had certainly blossomed, started to blossom during the early two thousands, it certainly was nowhere near the massive like overwhelming juggernaut it is today where the internet is the number one place to, to find entertainment and media. Mm -hmm. So having a channel for gamers made a lot more sense back in the 2000s because there really was not a place for gamers to conglomerate in such a way up until, you know, it, like even their own website, while they had their own website, they had G4TV.com. In fact, I believe they even made that in one of their podcasts, G4TV.com. Uh, it wasn't quite as ubiquitous of a ne of a necessity in life as it is today. Mm -hmm. So having something like that worked. I mean, that's it's just how it was. But within a few years, the uh, the on demand um, setup was starting to run its course as more and more people started to get more and more access and um, band and bandwidth started to get bigger and bigger. The idea of doing full-on streams in, in limited capacities started to become more and more of a possibility. And, the, and of course, this was when we started to see YouTube start to take the, its first steps into what it would become. Yeah, by 2010, uh, websites like ScrewAttack and personalities like the AVGN were already starting to be a big thing. Game trailers had become, like, the predominant gaming site on the web and some, so something like G4 just kind of seemed a little outdated. And gr granted some of some of it was some of it was a case of this of inevitability others other parts of it were um were their own were their own decisions by th by trying to throw things at the wall. And I'm always reminded of the buggy whip speech from other people's money. The quickest way to go broke is to get an increased share in a shrinking market. Yeah. So, the, the G4's demise was pretty much the uh, inevitable. But, we wouldn't be talking about this tonight if that was the end of the story. Now, would we? Yeah. <laughs> Although, no! <laughs> since, you, since you mentioned dipping into anime, I will give G4... <laughs> The the original G four is cr is credit in helping me with my crusade when it comes to expanding people's tastes in anime. Given a handful of of um sh of shows that a lot of people I knew first saw through G four Tech TV. Um, Better Man, Better Man, Gatekeepers twenty three, Ooh. Last Ooh. Exile, Yep, The Soul Taker, Yep, um, Fushigi Yugi. Ah, I think there may have been a few others, but a lot, a lot of stuff that was that was being brought in through Pioneer, and then later on, um, Genion. And and so it was all really non-mainstream stuff because the mainstream at the time was still uh, mostly Bandai and um, Toei, and yeah, Toei, Bandai, and Shueisha. Um. Yeah. Well, this this was a this was that time when you ha when you basically had a three a three way competition between um between ADV, Geneon, and um and Bandai. Yeah. And Hell, during uh back back in twenty ten, G four was going to be the exclusive broadcaster of the Marvel anime, so. That gives you an idea of like how deep into that mar into that uh, niche they were willing to go. Yeah, bullet dodge there, given how given how the Marvel anime was kind of a disappointment. Yeah, not their fault though. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> but getting back to what I was talking about now, mm -hmm. now that that has happened, 
So for roughly about six years or so, G4 had kind of just fall off the radar because it was the channel was gone. There was no one talking about it. You know, and it, only only the hardcore fans, myself partly included, would look back fondly on it. But it really wasn't anything to talk about anymore. There was. There was one person from G4 who was still being talked about. Let's be honest. Everybody has talked about Adam Sessler's crack addiction since the moment G4 went down. Oh, God. Yeah, that man. <laughs> that man is still on cocaine. You cannot convince me otherwise. No, nope. I'm not going to disagree with you. However, oh, cocaine is a hell of a drug. Something interesting happened on July 24th of 2020 because the Twitter accounts for G4... Attack of the Show and X Play suddenly showed up again. Suddenly started popping back up, posting a teaser video. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, G4 was coming back in 2021. And over time, we started learning more. Uh, we learned that Olivia Munn might be coming back, though I don't think that ever panned out. No, no especially since, oh. especially since in the intervening years, she de she decided to she decided to simply say. I'm going to Hollywood. Yeah, but and then do terrible in Hollywood. We did see we did get to see a reunion special in November where we saw Kevin Pereira, Olivia Munn, Adam Sessler, Morgan Webb, Kristen Adams, and Blair Herter come back for just a little kind of a reunion tour. However, we actually found out who the one of the first new hosts of G4 was going to be, and uh, wrestling fans suddenly started perking their ears. As Austin Creed, or otherwise known as Xavier King Woods, uh, host of the YouTube series Up Up Down Down, was announced as one of the hosts. That's what got me hyped there. And he <laughs> yeah. was he was put he was pushing for what he had been pushing on his social media for months about wanting to be wanting to be involved in G four and be a host. I'd say that the two things that he was pushing hard for were that and becoming King of the Ring. Yeah. Which, a couple years later, look where he is now. <laughs> <laughs> Probably feeling pretty happy about himself. Hmm. Before long, a whole new host, a whole new set of hosts. The only, actually, the only two original hosts to return were Kevin and Adam. Everybody else was pretty much brand new. And a lot of, and given that we are in this current era, a lot of the new hosts were actually internet personalities. Content creators of many different types. Uh, on the aforementioned uh, King uh, Austin Creed, we also had uh, Scott Wozniak, Scott the Woz, Kasim G. We had Code Miko, meaning they even got into the VTuber side of things. We had Gerard Khalil, aka the Completionist, Kit Boga. You know, there's a lot of big names here, and of course, there's one other name that I'm going to have to bring up because it has been one of the reasons we're talking about this: Indiana Black, otherwise known as Frost Corinne. And oh boy, <laughs> probably the. I would like, I would like to point out that um, Frosk in her in her name is Norwegian for frog, which makes this the one frog that I'm pretty sure Lady K would not care for. <laughs> oh, fucking facts! I gotta be careful with saying any further than that, then. <laughs> but now, what now, um. With the, with this whole with with this whole setup and the fa and the fact that Comcast was once again involved, I mean, obviously, I think they still I think they still own the rights to the IP. I and, mean, copyright doesn't go away for like seventy years, monk. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And they ha and they they had they had a new set of, they had a new set of stuff. They were X Play was going to be revived. And there was, was Attack of the Show, and they even actually brought back some of the other uh, popular shows. They brought back Ninja Warrior and Unbeatable Bonzuke, yeah. if I'm reading correctly. And they were go they were going to be doing they were going to be doing reviews, and they were also going to be doing a D and D actual play. Um, which if you if if you wanted to bring D and D into the mix, you um you got the you got the wrong wrestler to do it. <laughs> Just saying. I mean, I know I know he's King Geek these days, but you find you find me a bigger D and D guy in wrestling than Brandon Cutler. Yeah, but that 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 
I'm pretty sure there was a deal made with WWE for this, so I'm willing to bet they wouldn't have been too kind with working with another promotion. Yeah, prob probably. I just had I just had to make I just had to make the joke because, um, well, Xavier's does doesn't strike me as much of as much as that much of a D and D guy compared to his other fandoms. Yeah, he's definitely more of a hardcore gamer than he is a uh, tabletop player. Well, at the, at the very least, if I at the very least if I ever meet him again, I can pick I can pick on, I can pick on him for two things: one, baby mouth. <laughs> And two, the fact that he pl the fact that he plays Bard, i.e., he want he wanted to he wanted to play Zelda songs and get and get away with it while play while playing FF14. <laughs> there are much more creative ways to use this, the music feature in FF14 these days. People, you should find them. Also, mm -hmm. um. For anybody boasting about their musical skills with it, with the Bard in FF14, a certain a, a certain Tenno in Warframe is laughing at you. Okay, so let's. I'm I'm going to be honest. Actually, playing playing Bard in 14, playing that music system is actually a little harder than programming those those songs. If only because you have to change a lot of stuff and and try and you actually have to play multiple parts if you're going to get anything good out of it. I know, I just like rubbing salt in wounds. But now, we should also mention real quick, because mm -hmm. I'm looking over the info I've got here. Originally, this was going to be just like an online streaming thing, but in October, it was announced that the cable network would return, and a new channel on Pluto TV called G4 Select has uh, been added to the mix, actually, as of about a couple weeks ago. That sounds like a desperation move to me. Well, Dude, first given off, what we're about to talk about, I think we know why. Yeah, first <laughs> off, what the fuck is Pluto TV? I believe that's an online uh, streaming channel. It's an. It is Pluto TV is basically a ca it's basically cable without cable. Yeah, that's where uh, Toku Shoutsu hosts. Uh, Tokushatsu, they have a channel dedicated to One Piece, Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, Yu Gi Oh. Yeah, Pluto TV is is. It's literally cable that you can watch for free, the, and it has on demand, Monk. It literally, it's literally just cable, but on your web browser. So, f so Fubo TV with a different coat of paint. Well, I mean, they at least have some taste because right now, uh. I literally just went to Pluto.tv and um, it immediately started showing me Boondock Saints. Fair point. Boondock Saints. But moving moving right along. Um, when when I first when I first when I first found out about the this this relaunch, my my I was. Admittedly, a little bit cautious, simply because I had seen my I had seen my fair share of throwbacks, and as a wrestling fan, I've seen countless throwback organizations that make that make a bit of noise and then fizzle out. And when it came to th when it came to this particular project, um, my my mindset was that relying relying on the past was only going to go so far. And hell, if it, if I want to really twist the knife as as a wrestling fan when it comes to throw when it comes to throwbacks that don't work that that don't work, um, cast your mind back to two thousand six. Oh no. Shades, Zan, Coops, I think you know exactly where I'm going with this. Oh God, please no. Do I have to relive this now? Please no. Though I left this behind me. The zombie. <laughs> yeah, and as pa as painful as as painful as it is to br to bring up that 
I do so with a purpose. Because that was that was relying on the that was relying on a bit of the nostalgia and resting on its laurels for every for everything afterwards. And of course, of course, I'm not going to go too far into into the WWE CW because, well, at because Adam did a mu- Adam did a much better job covering it, and other people have done much better jobs covering it. Fuck, even Maddie did a better job covering it than we will. <laughs> Exactly. And to G4's credit, when it came to this relaunch, it it really did feel like they were at least trying to recapture the, 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 the feel of the old G4. Not just in having the old shows like X-Play and Attack of the Show, but just the overall feeling of a place for gamers. Trying to go back to the true old school days and getting a bunch of content creators involved actually makes sense when on paper when you think about it i mean they always they were always trying to get like up and comers and like bear in mind it was g4tv.com that introduced the world to to jeff Keeley. take that as you will <laughs> the dorito pope <laughs> yeah the like dorito pope that so, meme will never die and just tapping can't into down. the gate the geek culture in that kind of way, does make sense. And the kind of people they brought in, again, Austin Creed, Gerard Khalil, Scott the Waz, Kasim G, you know, those are big names. And again, Code Miko tapping into the burgeoning VTuber market mm-hmm. with somebody who's not going to who's gonna be applicable to a more gamer culture market as opposed to an anime culture makes a lot of sense. Like, on paper, this sounds like a really great idea. <laughs> well, that's the key Notice thing. What does keep saying on, on paper? paper. <laughs> yeah. Notice I keep saying that. Well, and I think that it would have remained in obscurity because let's be honest, its revival was rather obscure. Um, it, it wasn't pomp, circumstance, and fanfare as they might have been expecting. Um, because the internet is a very wide place these days, and spaces for gamers are a plenty. There is yeah. no lack whatsoever. You can find a space for you just by looking a little. It's not even that hard. You don't have to, like, you know, fine tooth comb and microfi- a magnifying glass for it. Yeah. There's a reason why even a site like Screw Attack just couldn't hold its weight after a while. Even with its death battles, yeah. <laughs> well, I'd say like, I'd say de- I'd say death battle ended up ended up out ended up outgrowing Screw Attack. Exactly. That's just why they changed the channel name over because yeah, that's exactly what happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, something like Screw Attack just was not viable in this current marketplace, and so things had to change. And even even when they created Game Attack, it was vastly different, and even it couldn't survive. It's gone. <laughs> The, and that's just the nature of the beast. I'd yeah. like to I'd like to point out that um, they had they had split their stuff into instead of consolidating into one channel, they had split their stuff into several channels, several channels on YouTube. I'm not sh- and I'm not sure how well their Twitch numbers work, because I can't get access to those. But. I mean, you had you had their two primary you had their two primary ones. Oh. Then you have then then you had um. The then you had the whole you had the whole Aust, Austin show Austin show channel which is most is mostly known for is mostly known for name your price. Um. Then there then there was invitation to party which was their which was their um. D and D show, and a dedicated channel to Attack of the Show. The big pro- the big problem with all with all of these is, first off, you cannot fight a war on two fronts. Trying trying to have trying to give di- trying to give individual channels to these different shows was a terrible idea. Is as somebody who's worked in web usability, 
giving people extra steps to whatever they're looking for is an easy turnoff. A very e a very easy turnoff because mo because most people want want to know exactly where they need to go in a few seconds, and if you're not providing that to them, well then you failed. People like having things easy to find. Mm -hmm. They like it, you know the easier it is to access certain things, the more favorable it's going to be. Ha expecting people to spread themselves out so thin is asking for trouble. Now, the other thing the other thing to to consider is the fact that with a, with a lot of with a lot of these a lot of the things that I mentioned, it's very mu it's very much a case of doing things that other people had already been doing throughout um, throughout the last few years of YouTube, I mean, with 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 doing with doing more game show like approaches, how is that, that on paper? How is that any different than what Mr. Beast is doing these days? What are the key aspects of content creation? Something that even I still haven't have trouble with is you if you're gonna do something. Do something that stands out amongst the others. It could be similar to something else, but do something that's different for you. And that's the that was something that G4 was never going to be able to do because a broadcast channel owned by a major corporation, they're going to do what they think is going to get them the most views, even if that actually backfires on them because they're going to chase the easy route and it never fucking works. The other thing is try is trying to jump is trying to jump right trying to jump right in right into the muck um like you're cannonballing instead of taking a swan dive because as in, I think as anybody who's met, who's managed to make their success through social media these days they will they will constantly tell you it's a marathon not a sprint they just, they wanted to jump right in and think and think that they would bring that they would bring in everybody and that's never how this kind of thing works yeah sure like the, and, and that cannonball analogy makes make works really well they made a bit big a uh, somewhat big splash but they didn't get very far because they jumped in pretty short whereas a swan dive you're going you're not going to get it's not going to be noticed at first but once you take off, people are going to start paying attention to you. Yeah, and let's con let's consider how a lot of sh let's consider how a lot of shows start. A lot of them start with the idea of just some just somebody doing just somebody doing something that they find entertaining, and usually through either natural charisma or or right place, right time, or both, they're able to bring more and more people to to them to watch. What I'm getting at here is a failure to understand the ecosystem of the environment that they were stepping into by try by trying what? to by trying to make this a a YouTube slash Twitch thing. They were hoping to to succeed based on name recognition alone, and the name recognition certainly got them some, certainly got them some eyes, but. You can, but um, as any as anyone will tell you, name recognition is never enough. As much yeah, as we may like the distinguished gentleman as a movie, it's wrong. Yeah, it's like it's a case of okay, cool. You 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 got Austin Creed. You got Scott the Waz. You got Code Biko. You've got the Completionist. Okay, what are you gonna do with them? And that's the uh... other thing. <laughs> From what I was able to see when I was doing my research, like let's con let's consider those names: the Completionist, Scott the Waz, Austin Creed. Now, the Completionist is more is more known for hit for his YouTube documentary style. Um, Scott, but Scott the Waz and Austin Creed are far more over the top um, forces of personality. But there's not a whole lot of opportunity to show that personality with these formats. 
I'm gonna be real with you right now. Scott DeWaz is highly overrated. Overrated or underrated? That's not the point. The point. The point is not. The point is bringing these strong personalities and then not letting them be personalities. Yep, Gee, where have being... I heard that before? Mm-hmm. I can't imagine where, Monk. <laughs> it's not like I'm having the strangest se sense of Dijon mustard about. Oh, so many. A certain places. company in Connecticut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we could go all day on that shit again. We already we already <laughs> did. That was part of the Exodus trilogy. But the point is, the the point is is that what is that all? Let me let me make a let me make a bit of a comparison. I let's let me bring up Lucha Underground, which I hope to do a Geek Watch episode on one of these days. My first introduction to Lucha Underground was through a, was through a selection of YouTube clips, and the first few, um, the first few U videos they put up on YouTube was were a, were a glorified set of Meet the Cast, including some in particular one in particular one name who really who was really able to re reinvent himself through that um, Johnny Mundo, and of course and of course El Jefe himself. That was my first introduction to both of them and a few of. And a few others like Pentagon, who are, of course, doing quite well for themselves. <laughs> the point, the point with it is, you have to, yeah, you have to, int you have to introduce what's co what's coming and build that up before you e can even go that route. Hell, even even Ruby figured this out with doing the color trailers before they even put out episodes. That's. Still not enough to save Ruby, but that's for a different Geek Watch. Yeah. The point the point is is that they ju they jumped right in without ex without giving any explanation without giving any explanation of the shows the format that they were going to be using, even the even the style even the styles that they would be using for their reviews. There should have been a we are, there should have been a we are G four kind kind of video as their first thing. Not a lot. Not a live stream. Just a just a video going. Here's here's what we are. Here's what we do. We're back. This is what this is what's coming. This is and this is actually this meet the cast or meet the people the the faces thing is a common thing and has been a common thing when it comes to large scale um, corporations that run on their personality. Uh, and in the internet age, not making a video like that for your personality-driven visual entertainment medium is not just stupid, it's uh, criminally missing the point. Mm -hmm. now yeah, because the thing is, is that, yeah, obviously a lot of these personalities are well-known, but not to everyone. There are people who don't watch wrestling and don't know who the fuck Austin Creed is. They don't know who the Completionist is. They don't know who Scott the Waz is. Hell, there's a lot of names on this list I've never even heard of before. Like, I don't know who Alex Golden Boy Mendez is. I don't know who Olivia May is. I don't know who Gina Darling is. I, you know, you need to show people these who these people are and give them a taste of what they are providing so that you know, oh, okay. That sounds like a lot of fun. I think that's now it. I think that's worth checking out. And I decided to go to the very back of G of um G 4s um video video catalog. And here's and what the one that I have is the Comic Con at home. We never stopped playing. That was a year ago. After that was. A hot was the holiday reunion special, which I brought up earlier. Yeah, after th then a very special G four reunion special. Um, then li then live with the cast and special guests, which was a live stream. Then a a um gl a glitch video with set with Sessler covering Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. Um, a new games thing with Sessler and the Completionist. Um. Uh, rare a clip, 
essentially a glorified X-Play clip show and a teaser for the return of Attack of the Show. All of those were about a year ago, and none of them are exactly what we're going into, this whole me this whole meet the cast thing. Because even if... Even if you wanted to argue that these are, that these are large named YouTubers, um, being that does not necessarily mean that they're that they're going to jump over. Um, Destination America made that made that made that mistake made that mistake a while back where they thought that bringing in um, bringing in bringing in impact would would bring more eyes onto their channel. Which we know how that worked out, and um, the the impact story is a, is a is a hell of a, is a hell of a lot of um of a reach. Yeah, oh. even even extremely large named uh, entertainment icons in the streaming and YouTube scenes uh, are still um, separated by audience type even someone as astronomically large as felix pewdiepie over a hundred million subscribers it's still a very specific subscribe base yes a hundred million is a goddamn huge number that's nearly a third of the u.s's total population but in the scheme of you know nearly eight billion people on the planet that's it's t that's still a pretty large fraction but tiny in comparison and it's still a very specific audience type that wants to see a very specific entertainment type yeah um, normally when a content creator on either twitch or youtube tries to do a collab or crossover with another content creator sure there might be a little bit of, cr uh, of cross-pollination maybe some viewers will jump on board the new the other guy but more often than not no they're just gonna be like oh that guy's cool all right, buddy. All right, my favorite guy. What's next? That too. Yeah, you. You sometimes you just like the person for the person, and that's actually a really big thing when it comes to the internet uh, personality age of entertainment. Uh, sometimes you just like the person for the person. You don't even give a shit about the content. I can guarantee you that most of the people who watch PewDiePie these days do so because Felix has stopped playing a character nearly as much and is being himself, and they're so interested in that. Yeah, same with um, guys like Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, hell, even streamers like Ninja and all of them. They're not watching Ninja for just for the content, just for the, watch him play Fortnite a hundred times. They just like Ninja. Even if I don't get it, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. And that put that push towards authenticity is one is I'd say the fir I'd say the first notch against this attempt at a G four throwback. Because of the fact that people want that, people more and more want that level of authenticity, and aren't as, aren't as interested in the over-the-top characters looking like a giant goober on the on all of their thumbnails. Oh, it's hard. It's hard to really do. It's hard to really do that when you are do, when 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 you are not in a position to do so, for lack of a better term. Hell, if anything, I'd say these a lot of these content creators jumping on G4 might have actually ended up hurting them in the long run when you think about it. Because, you know, someone like Austin Creed, he's a professional wrestler. Performance is his thing. And and while he is more authentic on Up Up Down Down, he's still kind of being a, kind of going a little over the top with it. So him jumping board, you can work with that. He's not going to be hurt, be hurt too bad. But someone like the completionist who's authenticity about being a guy who completes every game that's something that's a lot easier to break and that could end up hurting his reputation if things go south mm -hmm. well his reputation has actually already been massively damaged uh due due to his um cooperation with g4 because um he's been literally caught out red-handed pushing the agenda g4 wants to push mm -hmm. And I that's another case. <laughs> yeah. And that's another. That's, oh yeah, we want to get all the old, the gamers back so that we can, you know, get this up and running. They're also very clearly running with an agenda. Oh yeah. And it 
and none of the gamers are having it. That's the other part. When it comes and putting it, when it comes to when it comes to said ag said agenda, the there is the major major issue of not of not. I guess not, I guess the best way I'd put it is not, is um is not even is not even understand not not a, because of the fact that they're so laser focused on a certain type of people that they don't that they've forgotten the fact that you cannot control what sort of audience you attract. Yeah. There there is a certain if you if you want to say oh we want we want all gamers except for those shitlords over there. Well, if you're talking about a game that those shitlords happen to like, you're going to get those shitlords. It's just how this yeah. works. You, well, you, you, you think a lot of VTubers and other content creators wanted the specific audience they ended up with? I'm willing to bet most did. They just That's just who bothered to show up. Mm -hmm. Well, and the big thing is, it doesn't matter what the particular um, agenda really is. It, sure, everybody's probably that would be watching this is probably well aware of frost's outburst and knows what type of agenda it is but if it, even if it had been other types of agendas any type of agenda gamers do not like being proselytized to gamers do not like being evangelized to we don't like being preached to unless yeah. it's about really good video games or uh things that advance gaming for the better as a whole such as um, you know, the movements to say, let the developers make what they're going to make and let it rest on its own merits. Mm -hmm. the, That's an agenda is, I push wholeheartedly. The thing is, is that for a lot of us older gamers, we've been dealing with getting preached to, proselytized, and basically bullied our entire fucking lives. We're not putting up with that shit no more. <laughs> so if you're going to do that shit, nah, we ain't fucking having it. And I know... And as far as the as far as the idea of want of wanting to bring in a whole new audience that it, that is that is more in line with tra trademark pending the message. I can't do the echo effect as I'm not critical drinker. <laughs> um, that is a case of what I like to call the greener grass fallacy. The grass is always Hi. greener on the other side, but it's only that green because of the radiation. <laughs> Simpsons metaphor, and give the other th the other th when it comes to their reviews. Now, when you did reviews, shades you had you had a certain style and how and how you approach things. When I do mm -hmm. reviews, I have a certain approach that I that I utilize. Both of us are going on are going more on a tier system than going on a um, straight numeric approach. For a couple of reasons, one, it's it allows more wiggle room. I'd I'd say, and two, we've had exper we've had our fair share of experiences with certain questionable scoring over the past twenty years. Oh uh, yeah, and uh, GameSpot, anybody? Anyone remember that shit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I had for for those who never saw my videos, and unfortunately you won't be able to look them up now. Thank you, Tell, uh, thank you, Show Pro. Uh, I used to use two different scores. I had my personal score, which was my personal enjoyment of the show, but I also had a seal depending on how much I recommended it to peep to the casual audience. If I gave it a low, if I gave it a bronze or silver seal, probably meant that you're gonna have to deal with some caveats if you expect to enjoy this show. Not everyone's gonna like it. Gold and platinum are shows that were good, that were probably good enough that anybody can enjoy them. Platinum being really good and highly recommended. And then, on the very rare occasions, there were two opposite ends of the spectrum. The seal of fail for shows that were so bad, I would never recommend them to anybody. And only three anime I ever reviewed ever got that distinction. <laughs> but that also holds true for the diamond seal. The shows that were so fucking good that not watching them would be a crime. Mm -hmm. And again, only three shows ever got the diamond seal. Yeah. I was very selective. <laughs> now... I'm not. At, I wasn't as selective with my with my approach simply because um different simply because different subject matters. But I did utilize a tier system based on who I based on who I'd recommend it to and what play what play style is going to be 
better served with the, with this particular entry. Going at the bottom was of course a void, and at the top was of course strongly recommended. Um, it's usually based on how many how many caveats there were, or if or if there were other problems. Now, that can, the reason I bring up those particulars is they tried to do when they tried to do reviews, they tried to do reviews in the exact same way that they had done in the past. Even though people had um, very strong questions, even back in the forum days, I remember a lot of debates about the star ratings that would show up on the old X-Play episodes. <laughs> or, the, or the fact that Judgment Day had a very, very blatant um, Xbox bias. No, 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 Monk. There was no such bias. You're just imagining things. I have a healthy imagination, oh. but even my imagination has limits. <laughs> oh, you're saying that, Zan. Uh, how much? How much did they pay you? What's your paycheck? Oh, uh, you see, I said it in such a sarcastic manner. My pay is now negative. They're yeah, gonna I find. Know. I was. I was fucking around. I, oh, I know. <laughs> They're gonna find me, and I'm going to raise the middle finger because I'm gonna say, "Fuck you! I didn't sign that contract." Mm -hmm. <laughs> But the point the point is 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 that not only not only were they trying to do the exact same style of review the exact with the exact same set um <laughs> having the exact same method of having interns play the game instead of using your own damn footage in a and in a environment where everybody is use either using their own footage or crediting people other people's footage if they can't get it themselves which is get, which is going to happen especially if you're reviewing online games like say Nerd Slayer does you ha, you can, that's not something that you can really do and to make it even worse they weren't even all that timely with with reviews one of their one of their um one of their early reviews from several months ago was Death Stranding a game that had already been out for for at le for at least a year by that point. Yeah, we we live in an age that unless you're someone like me who does decide to just go to do lookbacks after the hype's died down, you're supposed to you know for game reviews you got to be jumping on that shit as soon as it comes out. Otherwise, you're gonna get left in the dust. And to be fair, I've never been I've never been fan. I've, I will admit I've never been a fan of the quick turnaround this demanded for. Reviews. This is this is a bit of an issue, and especially especially with certain genres over others, I um I have a hard time believing that anyone could do a full review of a 4x game in less than a week. <laughs> no, monk. I can review all of Stellaris in one day. Of course, I'm not going to touch Stellaris. Fuck you, paradigm. Could you imagine? Could you imagine doing a review of Endless Space Two in a week? <laughs> well, Zan's gone bye bye, Egon. What do you got? Sorry, uh, but I'm beyond the capacity for rational thought. <laughs> now that's only that's only one example. Don't don't even get me started on trying to review any role playing game that's come out in the last thirty years in that amount of time. Yeah. It took me three weekends of con to completely destroying my sleep schedule to complete Elden Ring in what would be essentially be a week's worth of time. Mm -hmm. But at the but at the same time, if you're if you're gonna be if you're gonna be go going around like you're king shit, then being it then being able to keep up with what's currently being released and giving at the very least impressions of what's currently being released. I think is a bit more warranted. And what makes it even worse is that once again, once again, a lot of the big personalities who you think would be the draw for this G4 aren't the ones doing the reviews. They didn't have they as far as I'm aware they didn't they just did reviews in the same way um game trailers or any or any of their other con any of their contemporaries then or now do reviews and nobody likes that method. The method is old, stale, and no longer appreciated. Change your format. 
Like when it, when I think of when I think of people whose reviews I actually whose reviews I actually watch, they either fall into two categories. They're on the inform the informative end of things. Um, people like Worth a Buy is a, people like Worth a Buy or Skill Up are examples of this kind of thing. Or they're on the entertaining e end of things, and they just do they just review whatever the hell they want. You know, people like Mandalore, Seth Zinch, and so on. Ah, Seth Zinch. Highly recommend. Any of you not watching Seth Zinch, go watch Seth Zinch. Seth Zinch. Seth Zinch. Mm -hmm. uh. Talking to us here, everybody. <laughs> hey, he was he was the guy who got me who got me to finally try synthetic. Good game. Mm -hmm. Very good game. And when it comes to when it come when it came to when it came to reviews, the mo the latest review that I, the latest review that I saw on their channel was Dynasty Warriors Nine Empires. But what? Which came? <laughs> Go ahead. That review came that review was being done by Sessler and that came that review came out yesterday. Dynasty Warriors when, 9 Empires came out like 3 months ago. Uh, excuse me, what? <laughs> 2 weeks ago they were doing a review of Tetris Effect which has been out for a year. Uh, excuse me, what? <laughs> Yeah. Excuse me seriously, please Ow. and thank you. My brain. Don't worry, it's only a mi it's only a minor aneurysm, Shades. You'll be fine. Oh, I know. But now I feel like Grog in Critical Role. I would like to rage. Yeah, and as far. As far as the as far, as far as the uh, as far as the other the other stuff, there's the there's the kind of stuff that other people would be doing. But I've danced around it enough. I think I think this is as good a time as any to talk about the whole Frost incident and why that was pr why that was probably the one thing that broke <laughs> um, this new this newfangled G four. Time to address the elf in the room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ooh. Now, I know we use the term elephant in the room quite a bit, but that's because elephants are big and hard to ignore. <laughs> Always have and been. We and we tend to fight a lot of them around here these days. Mm -hmm. They're kind of clumsy, that's why. Easy to find an elephant when it's rampaging. Yeah. Uh, the, thing, the thing when it comes to... When it, when it comes to her little speech about about the about um spending all that time to talk to talk about must sexism, first off, um in my in my person in my personal experience um and I I think I said I think I said this when I had Iron Liz on the show there's no there are no there are no bigger obstacles to getting women in games than other women. Yep. <laughs> and. That's sim and that's simply because of, I was applying um, crabs in the bucket mentality regard regarding that whole thing. If you know the if you know you know. <laughs> but there, but one one particular line that that I found very telling, that was kind of saying the quiet part out loud, was was her saying, Olivia Munn did not exist to be nice on the eyes for you. Well, let me tell you this, sister. You're not very nice on the eyes yourself. Well, no. no. You see, the thing is, she, the, the line was, Olivia Munn did not exist to be nice on the eyes for you. Morgan Webb did not exist to be nice on the eyes for you. And yes, she did say it with that rising inflection. Mm -hmm. And then, one of my favorite things. Someone just juxtaposed clips of Morgan and Olivia Munn on the shows when they were, when they were around. Um, you're fucking wrong! Yeah, you could make the argument for Morgan Webb because of her very assertive demeanor and everything like that, but there is no making that argument with Olivia Munn. That was exactly why she was brought on the show. 
even if that were 100% the case, that is n that is n that the reason why I said that this was saying the quiet part out loud is because, ironically speaking, the one who's the one who's reducing people to being nice on the to being just nice on the eyes was her, because yep. that's completely discounting the fact that that um both of that both Morgan Webb and Olivia Munn. For uh, for as many faults as they may have had, they at least had some degree of charisma and some degree of playing of playing along, some degree of showmanship in the in yeah. how they performed. They understood especially, that they were on a show to perform. Yeah, especially Olivia Munn. You know, again, I make the, we make the comment that yeah, she was nice to look at, but the things she did on Attack of the Show, how many women, how many people? would be willing to embarrass themselves on such a level like she did almost every week. She did some of the most outrageous stuff. And that combined with her sex appeal is what got people's attention. You could put any sexy lady on and you'd probably get at least a few eyes. But the fact that she was willing to do the things she did, the hot dog thing we mentioned earlier, how the, a lot of the cosplay she did during that time, that was what got people's attention because she was willing to do so much stuff. And I'd like to see Frost be willing to do that kind of shit. Yeah, back in the day, you wouldn't even see a lot of people do something like that. If, exactly. She was willing to do whatever it took to get people to watch. Not just be sexy, but be outrageous. You know what? I'm about to make a damn crazy comparison here, but I want you to follow me here for a minute. Mm -hmm. okay. Because... The way, the way Olivia Munn ended up drawing people's attention to attack the show in G4 is not too dissimilar to how a certain personality on, uh, on, online drew people's attention to a very particular organization. Who do I mean? Good morning, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> See, I already knew where he was going as soon as he wanted to make a tirade. I already know. <laughs> anytime Shades wants to make a tirade about a personality, it's going to end up at Coco. <laughs> You're not wrong, sir. You're not wrong. But you see my point. Because Coco, that was the re she was the reason Hollow Live got noticed in America because she was so fucking outrageous, people had to take notice. And yeah. that is exactly what Olivia Munn did. She was so outrageous, so over the top, and doing such crazy shit, you couldn't help but pay attention. Yeah, Coco was the one who pioneered Ho Hollow Live into the popular scenes in in the U.S. You're exactly right, mm -hmm. and <laughs> Olivia Munn is the is the one who popularized Attack of the Show and thus G4 Tech TV into the modern mainstream with her outrageousness. I may make a lot. I may make a lot of the same comparisons a lot. I may com I may bring up the same topics, but God damn it, if I don't have a goddamn point, <laughs> if my the only... shoe fits, <laughs> yeah, if the shoe fits. But my my only thing is. Uh, I, I, yes, this is anecdotal, and yes, this is the exception that proves the rule. Uh, I'd been watching Hollow Live since we say's um debut. So, well, to be fair, we say was no was no no no, no shortage of uh, crazy at times. So, <laughs> yeah, but I'm talking about her debut. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching it. Hollow Life for way too long. True, bro, but yeah, like again, again, there's always exceptions, like you said. But again, the, that the fact the that it was it was Coco that even made Hollow Life English a thing, you know, she helped make that a thing. I think Her kind of and a little bit of hot and and a little bit of Hachama, a little oh, bit of Hachama. Obviously, yeah, I, I've said that myself. Okay, but both <laughs> of both of them go both of them. Going, going very against what's against what would be expected, or just the juxtaposition of see, of seeing an anime girl go, um, going completely off, going completely off script, is is certainly the case. We you could argue something similar with some of them, with some of those early memes that got generated through um, through co through um, I'd say through I'd say even Kizuna. How many how many times did her trying to say fuck you become a, become a running gag? Oh, absolutely! Oh, that was how bunch. the early VTuber explosion happened because her saying fuck you, mm -hmm. fuck you. It's just like the fuck an anime girl saying that. What the fuck is this? Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying, and that's what Olivia Munn did during her time in Attack of the Show. She 
would wear crazy outfits. She would do perform crazy stunts. She would embarrass herself on so many occasions. Not like the kind of embarrassment like, oh God, I did something wrong. It's a case of I'm doing something so fucking silly. There's no way you're not embarrassed doing it. You want to know what's another parallel in regard to this kind of thing? Uh. As, as, and this might be a bit of a stretch. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Johnny Knoxville. Welcome to Jackass. No, no, you know what? I see it. I fucking see it. It mm -hmm. is... It is a train wreck. <laughs> that's what that's what Jackass was. It was a train wreck. It was so crazy. It's like it you don't want to watch, but you just can't fucking look away. It was a train wreck that knew it was a fucking train wreck. It was exactly. self aware. And that's what they did on Attack of the Show. They created a train wreck. They knew they were creating a train wreck, but they're like, you know what? If we're gonna fucking train wreck, we're gonna fucking train wreck. Especially since Attack of the Show struck struck me as as their own little. Um, take slash spoof of late of late show style television. Yes, yeah, yeah. absolutely. They they had the serious moments where they would sit down, do interviews, and ha and talk about gaming news. But then they would have those ridiculous skits we've been talking about. You know, just fucking crazy shit. Like just doing this whole like parodies of like cop shows and doing a whole bunch of all these other like the challenges, the eating challenges, and everything like that. They did all that crazy stuff that most late shows would do, and it fucking worked. Mm -hmm. And th and that's what that's why I find that's why I found it um so ironic that she that she. Had fo that she had focused so much on the stick with tits um, comparison, because <laughs> the what irony it really, of it all. What it really, t what it really told me is that is that I be I firmly believe that in her mind, and I believe that she believes this. If you'll allow me to be psychoanalyst for a moment, <laughs> that she believes that the only reason why th why um why Webb or Mon or Mon got got pop got popular is because uh, is because of a bunch of a bunch of bros watching um not not knowing what a woman looks like or some or some similar straw man yeah yeah that argument is especially with morgan webb i, I wanted to take the time to bring this up because that to, with morgan webb the argument's even less strong is even weaker because was morgan webb good looking absolutely i'm not even i'm not here to insult morgan webb in any way in terms of looks but was she quote unquote sexy? No, she never was. She never tried to be sexy. She was just a woman who reviewed games. And in fact, she tended to be the kind of woman that most guys would have been probably scared of because she did not hold fucking back. She was assertive and borderline let's, aggressive in her tone. Let's uh let's let's actually take note of the fact that um when it was Tesler and Webb on X Play. Webb looked like a little beta bitch <laughs> all the fucking time. I mean, Tesler still looks like a little beta bitch now, <laughs> especially now that he's. I was going to say, you said Webb, not Tesler. Tesler, yeah. Tesler yeah, yeah. always does look like that, but even more so when standing next to Morgan. So, yeah, I don't think it was the good, it was the sexy looks that was winning people over with Morgan Webb. No. Although, although, after she left, she, de she did modeling and stuff and definitely did look motherfucking sexy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But she had already gained that popularity before doing that. So she didn't it wasn't it was just for her doing that for the fun of it, not for needing attention. Yeah. Um as a final note, let me br let me bring up a dear let me bring up a dear friend a friend of ours, a dear sister of the show, Mercedes. The reason why Mer the reason why I became friends with Mercedes wasn't because of her looks. Not in, not entire not entirely, and it certainly wasn't because of her profession. It was because most of the times that most of the times that I would speak with her, it was it was either it was either me going through dumb ideas or shit or shit posting or the one time that we, that she ended up discovering JoJo and I had to help. <laughs> yes, bring more into the hole. That and she that and. Just sh just sharing mythology tales because she is a massive mythology buff. Yeah, but uh, th th this to me represents a big problem with a lot of these ultra feminists, and I want to stress the ultra ex the extreme ultra feminists. The there are the women out there who the evangelicals, <laughs> the evangelicals, absolutely, because most women out there don't give a shit. 
All right? Most women out there actually like the attention. They like being looked at. And they want to do that. But there are some that don't, and that's fine. But then there are these people like Frosk, who insist that being sexy is a bad thing because it, 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 it's, it's meant for us. No, it's not. We don't need you to look sexy. We don't need you to be this super porn star look in order for us to be drawn to you. If you have a good personality, you don't have to be sexy looking. Again, Morgan Webb, she wasn't sexy looking, but she was, she was good looking. And she was at least enough of enjoyment and uh, good looking enough for us to say, okay, well, all she got. Oh, you've got this fun, assertive personality. You know what? I like that. That is what we want. We want personalities. We want charisma. We want you to present yourself the best version of yourself. Mm -hmm. You do that, we will be watching. Yeah. And now, of course, now I think, I think this is, now I want to make something clear. A lot of people look at the, look at Frost's rant as the as the moment that G4 that this new G4 killed itself. No, this thing was going this thing was going to end up dying. It's just a matter of whether it was going to die a slow death or a fast one. It was the catalyst, not the cause. Mm -hmm. That's also the reason why I brought up the content that they're doing. And as an aside, their um their D and D live their D and D live play um thing. Has less subscribers and gets less views than me. <laughs> <laughs> they, because I'm I'm looking at it right now. Invitation to party has only 404 subscribers. Ouch! Their last yeah. vi their last video got just 53 views, and that was four days ago. Yeah, they're not even coming close to touching the juggernaut that is Critical World. Speaking of, I believe it's time I take my leave because that's starting in about 15 minutes. All right, I will likely see, I will likely see you um, in that in that regard. Plus, I'm pr plus there's that other thing you've got to you've got to keep an eye out for. Yeah. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. <laughs> good night, shades. Now, the I'd say the big the big reason the bigger reason why this was a breaking moment is that while there's <laughs> definitely been the implication of the message. Patent pending. This was where this was where the mask came completely off, and one could one could say that it was just it was just her making the rant. Except here's the problem: when you're on something like that, you um even one person does reflect on everybody else. Yeah. Not to mention both Gerard and uh, Creed uh, cheered her on. Mm -hmm. Especially and, Black Hokage and Sessler. All of them were were cheering her on. Yeah, it can, um, I kind of wanted to juxtapose it with the uh, with the applause at gunpoint scene from V for Vendetta. <laughs> or or the or the um or the apl or the applause or the cue card scene in the first the first and only good Shrek. Yeah, I said it. Hey, Shrek Two was good too. Yeah, that's fine. I said good, not okay. Hey, Shrek Two was good. Well, freak, you know the whole thing about a free country. <laughs> yep, you're free to be wrong. I know. But, see, but having that having that out there gave the impression that 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 um that 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 that's what the whole show was trying to represent, and a lot of people are already are already a bit wired to. The, to um, have to having a nostalgic property being used as a subversive tactic. Yeah, we're already we're already uh, savvy to that particular stupidity. And do I do I think do I think that G four was brought back with the sole intent of subversion? No, it I think they. Been. I think I think that I think that a couple I think that they thought they thought that uh, they thought that appealing to the message would get would get that would get them the popular eyes, which that never works. And well, it got them the popular eyes for all of long enough to to um to ridicule them. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, it never works. And 
the other the other part of the other part of that 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 certainly didn't help that certainly didn't help is one other thing that she said that if you've got a problem with it don't watch never do that because everybody will take you up on that bet especially, especially gamers <laughs> yeah we don't forget shit like that that's basically saying you want to alienate us just because we just because you find it whatever you want to call it no bro that's just that's just not how it works I you pretty much just alienated your whole audience. I seem to recall a certain red-headed comic book writer making the line of, if you don't like my politics, don't buy my books. Mm, and what happened? Oh, yeah. Nobody's buying Kelly Sudaconic's books. In fact, oh, nobody's really? Buying, nobody's buying much of any books from the big two these days. I should know. I get the numbers every month. <laughs> what a surprise, Monk. Oh it's God. just... I, ju I can't understand why that happened. I can't understand at all. It's not it's not like we it's not like we had been warning people for years don't pit don't um don't piss in the pool otherwise you're just gonna have a bunch of angry swimmers. Don't poke the bear. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. Yeah, there's a bunch of cliches on the matter, but the but it all comes back to that to that same point. Arrogance always cometh before the fall, and I have and I've been looking at their social blades since since this little incident, and they they have been they have been falling by the by the hundreds, if not thousands, on their sub count daily. And um, from what from there was a bit of a rumor going about that Comcast was not happy because. This whole this investment with these sets and all that in the in this high highly produced G four, that could not have come cheap. Nope. And Looks like a professional sound uh, sound uh, studio and everything too. Mm -hmm. Oh man. And they and given how not cheap it was, obviously Comcast is going to want to return on their investment. And while we've poked fun at Comcast. Plenty of times, and I will poke on them anytime I ha get the chance to. One of the monastery's many whipping boys. If anything, monk, it's a lifesaver whenever King's Lounge, King's Lounge, or the other site fails when it comes to our tsunami nights. However, I can't, I can't fault them for wanting a return on their investment because I'd want the same thing if I were in their position. I mean, that's just that's just how business works. You're in it to you're in it to make money, right? We're here to do business, and business is good. <laughs> and uh. I do th then, but then we get to the creme the creme de la creme of the whole shitstorm, and the reason why I had to accelerate my plans. First off, there was the fact that they brought in. More, they brought in more VTubers for one of their shows, which, give, given the wave of popularity with VTubing, that's completely understandable. Um, and I'm always gonna, and I'm pretty sure for Iron Mouse, it's going to be an easy paycheck where she doesn't have to worry about Sea Dog raising the timer at the last minute. I mean, Connor raising the timer at the last minute is just because uh, he's a really good fucking friend. I I know, but I but I can't help but enjoy how that became a bit of a meme. <laughs> Comes back in, guys, pump it up. <laughs> and, she's like, and she's just like, no. Oh, oh Mousy, you will you will never uh, you will never be free of of Connor and his shenanigans. Every every hero has a villain in the story. <laughs> And and hey, his avatar has him wearing white. And but, they say that. <laughs> well, white in white in a whole, in a whole lot of in in a lot of a lot of areas in that in that part of Asia is the color of death. Oh, I know. Yep. But. The other thing is bringing in is bringing in amaranth. 
Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 that was funny. I'm not. A, I'm not. I don't know why you're mad about that, Coops. I found it absolutely hilarious. It is. Yeah, it's all it's people, very why funny. Did be, why did it have to be fucking Amara, the fucking Twitch dot of all people? Because she's a Twitch dot. That's why. There. This is. You have to understand, Coops. What you're seeing here is throwing shit at the wall and hoping it sticks. This is that. This is them crawling back to the audience that they had pissed off, trying to get their approval again. And you want to know something? It doesn't fucking work. Oh no, it didn't work. the <laughs> the v The views on the thing were abysmal. In fact, let me see, let me see if I, let me see if I can find that particular episode. The oh, the um, Austin show on the Austin show on G four, which has only slightly more subs than me, for some reason, um, only got eight hundred and thirty three views. As for as far as a clip version of it, I don't know how many how many views it got on Twitch, but I can't imagine it got that many. Yeah. And. This this low amount this low amount of views is that is as good a reason as any to try and throw things at the wall and clearly it didn't work because more people there are more videos of people laughing at the state of G four than there are people celebrating it and the the combination of the the combination of those two, of those two things. <laughs> Is a very is a very clear case of tr of trying to throw things at the wall, as I mentioned before, and in addition to that, the people who were standing for Frost's um, statement, they're pissed off too, <laughs> because now because now they're mad that G four is being hypocritical. <laughs> so, once again, this is this is why you don't play the message thing because you have to because when you play that game you have to play it 24/7 which is why we don't message we have a message what the message <laughs> is fuck the message is play games and fuck off <laughs> yep oh that that and drinking we forgot we can't we can't forget about the drinking yeah, yeah. We, we, it, 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 alcohol is a way of life here in the monastery mm hmm and don't worry for those for some for those who need it. There are non-alcoholic versions. We keep that in the back. Very much in very much in the back because there's not because we don't need to stock as many of those things. Oh, true that. Oh, but reg the uh, now I now I do want to address the the whole thing about what. About whether or not, if they had taken the right approach, G four could have um, been could have been salvaged. Um, it would have required a radical restructuring to the point that it wouldn't have been noticed. It, it wouldn't have been anything like the format the, of G four prior. Yeah, I think I think the big I think the big problem is that they is as other people have pointed out. They tried to do a format in an environment that it was ill suited for. If you wanted to bring back the a lot of the a lot of the old crew for for some for something, that's perfectly fine. If you wanted to bring them back and call it G four, that's also fine. But you have but you have to understand that you're dealing with a whole audience that is probably not going to be familiar with that incarnation. They're going they're going to be more familiar with the uh, with the with um more recent um entertainers especially since there's a incredibly competitive market for online entertainers in general and gaming entertainers specifically that's wh that's why I that's why I brought up other reviewers and hell when it let's cons let's consider the fact that they I serious even if they went a more documentary style route for one particular video they would still be outclassed by at, by at least two people. Racevic, 
who does really good years later retrospectives on different games, even though for some reason he hates his voice, which is somewhat understandable. And, um, no clip. Yeah. The documentaries that they the documentaries that they do rival the kind of documentaries you'd see, that I that you used to be able to see it only at an Omni theater. The hell was that? You okay there? No, it was just my drink drink dropped to the floor. Ah. All right. But for a second, I thought you had face planted. That oh. too. <laughs> you wish. But. If the, ideally what they should, this is the reason why what I said that what they should have done is use this to reintroduce G4 to the to the online public, whether that be whether that be going through going through clips and then going through what they're going to be doing going forward, introduce introducing the cast. Oh, but ju but just making clear that. This is not going to be the old. This is not going to be the G four from two thousand two. We that's not something that we that's not something that we can do. We ha it has to become something new. Yep. Yeah. You must do something different with your life. And as far as as far as where things are going to go down the down the road, I do think that the. The there are going to be more views from people from people pointing and laughing at G at G four. I I'd say I'd say if if you were to look up G four on YouTube right now, I guarantee that you'd see more videos from people like Review Tech USA, um, the quartering and it's a Gundam than you would see G 4s videos proper. Yeah. And. The fact that the fact that their D, that their D and D channel, with all of its production, gets less views than we do, is a very damning statement. Means that they don't have a personality. The again, going back to the comparison to Critical Role that Shades was making, uh, part of the reason Critical Role is so successful, all of them are people with huge amounts of personality, and the personality is allowed to flourish. Mm-hmm. As, and as much as as much as I was very critical of how Power Rangers Hyperforce turned out, and as well as some of the later content with Hyper RPG, at the very le at the very least, they're tr they're trying for variety, and they are tr and trying for a certain a certain style. They have an, they have an identity that they're building around. Mm -hmm. Gr granted, ha granted, having having former having former actors certainly helped. Add a degree of legitimacy, and one of them, I hope he, do, I hope he does more tabletop stuff. Even though I don't know if he is, but with G with G four, it is just a, it is just a, it is just a gaming channel, and mm. the per, and the personalities aren't strong enough to be to carry it. That exactly. and a, few, a few people involved um, aren't an, aren't enough pers aren't enough in that regard of personalities. Um, that's why that's why we brought up some of the names before with Sessler. Sessler in the le in the in the years in between G four and now has devolved into a lol cow. And what and one who and one who flagellates his own thesaurus to try and sound smart. Yeah, he's the guy who, who, unlike someone like me, who actually does use big words just because that's how it's been part of my vocabulary for forever. Um, Sessler kind of just does it because he likes to sound like a fucking asshole. Which, we are assholes, but we're at least honest about it. We're uh -huh. assholes, and we're fun assholes. We're the type of asshole you like to hang out with. <laughs> He's well, the, the type, type of, of asshole who gets thrown out of bars. Yep. I mean, if I'm going to make a full-on comparison here, you all know how much I I torment and bane the monk's existence. That's my, that's kind of my shtick. 
But I don't do it to the point where he legitimately thinks I'm a bad person because I'm not stupid. Mm -hmm. And it's all in fun. It's all in good fun. Tesla, he's just an asshole to be an asshole. And I like the com I like the completionist, but his but he's not exactly what you would consider a character type of um content creator. Not yeah. in the same, not in the same sense, anyways. And honestly, honestly, seeing him seeing him on G four just looks very sad. Like there's just it, a lack of energy. Yeah, he he looks like he doesn't know why the hell he's there. Mm -hmm. It is a very sad sad thing to see. Creed, he's trying to he's trying to carry things on his back. He's I'd say he I'd say he's the one who's pl who to use a sports term is playing out of his mind. Mm -mm. But the problem that the problem is um the best parts when it came to up up down down the best parts when it came to his setup is him playing off of his fellow wrestlers especially Kofi who 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 um kind of kind of became the villain of that of that whole crew yeah or at least the annoying guy who you want who you want to see who you want to see lose in a game? The the he became the heel. Mm -hmm. If we're going to use wrestling terms for wrestlers, yeah, I mean. it is it is very much it is very much the case, and the in, the interplay with that, or or just the just the story sharing in a more casual sense with some of the people in the locker room. Mm-hmm. In, as well as the fa as well as the whole thing of giving everybody nicknames, um, I think one of my favorites was Becky Lynch getting the nickname of Soulless Senpai. <laughs> but and of course, and of course, through. Th with, because of the group, because of the group setup with G four, even even when you give somebody like Creed his own show, you don't you you can't you can't expect him to carry that kind of thing all by himself. He's got to have people to play off of. That's the that's the way a lot of proper shows are going to work. Are there some people who can carry a whole show by themselves or carry a whole podcast by themselves? Yes, I don't they think Creed is one of them. Common. Yeah, they are not common. No, they are rare unicorns. Not to mention the fact that um, wrestlers work best when working with each other. So, I I mean there are there are people who were singular um, personalities. Don't get me wrong; they were very very influential. Influential, but it was always best when they were up against another personality. Well, what? Why do you think the Interview setup was the, is the is done the way it usually is. Oh yeah, I know. Like look, look at the, look at a lot of those interviews. Look at a lot of those interviews with um with Mean Gene, and you'll kind of get where I'm going with this. Mm hmm. And obviously, obviously that's an easy example to go with. But the point is, um, when you're doing what amounts to a glorified chamber play, you got to have somebody to bounce off of. Nope. Um, it's kind of hard to do a chamber play all by yourself. Yeah. At that point, it's not even a chamber play. It's borderline a soliloquy. It would be a soliloquy at that point, if you're by yourself. Mm -hmm. And while soliloquies are, no, are nothing new when it comes to theater, um, they're usually just a scene, because trying to do a soliloquy for an entire play all by yourself... Might be asking a bit too much of certain actors. Yep, you have to turn it into a rakugo at that point, where you're you're acting with yourself, but there's distinct parts. And I know somebody might bring up how Scott McNeil plays. Well, sometimes have to play several characters at once for a scene, all voiced by it, him. It's all, but it's several characters. That's the point. One, it's several characters, and two, I think Scott already knows he's crazy. Oh, Scott definitely knows he's crazy. <laughs> we love Scott McNeil here, but uh, yeah. 
Man's goddamn insane. Yeah. Don't go drinking with him. Monk would know. <laughs> if I had a dollar for every time somebody said, God, you're tall. <laughs> but, uh, we'd be rich. We'd be rich, Monk. Uh, I could move in, I could move into a colder climate. I'd get at least some pockets. You mean, you mean you'd move height. you'd move you'd move to Helheim? Pro probably so probably so I can so I can mo I probably move to Helheim just so I can just so I can annoy hell and ask and ask where's my money. I mean she also owes you money? Yes. Do they just all owe you money? In varying amounts, yes. That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> they all owe me money too, but for different reasons than you most likely. Yeah. Mostly been bets about who's evil or me or them, and I win every time. Yep. But the point is, the the point is as far as as far as the future of the of this G four, you're going to see a whole lot more desperation moves. I do think that they're going that there's going to be a bit of a limbo regarding whether or not Frost is fired or not. They don't want the backlash if they they don't want the backlash and butt hurt if they actually let her go. But they're not going to do anything with her, so she's just going to be sitting at home collecting a paycheck. Yeah, the way I see I things. I don't. I just don't... ran through a video talking about saying that they may have fired Frosk. I haven't gotten actual confirmation about that. It's just a couple people's words, so grain of salt. Yeah. Yeah. I don't foresee. I don't foresee her being fired anytime soon. If that's going to be the case. I do for I do foresee her trying to and trying to antagonize people on social media and it getting lesser and lesser returns because well irrelevant. Mhm. Mm and in that in that same vein I do think I do think that Comcast is going to have to come to a decision whether they blow it up, go offline for a few months and start fresh or just kill it. Because the way that things are going now probably aren't all that sustainable. When you're getting when you're getting view when you're getting views in the hundreds instead of the millions for some for that kind of money, um, it's not going to be worth it. And I I know you brought up the whole move to Pluto. If I'm being honest, they, sh they maybe they should have done that from the start instead of putting themselves on YouTube and Twitch and trying to potentially um, view bot to try and make it look like they got more views than they actually did. Since that was, yeah. that was a thing. I can't actually confirm whether or not there's enough evidence, but it certainly was sketchy when there were a whole lot of views on their live streams, but not a whole lot of commenters. Yeah. Not much to be said unless Twitch does their own investigation, though. Yeah, and I I doubt it's going to be important enough to war to warrant a investigation. Yeah. And because of that, G four is going to have is going to I think is going to have the end that. I had predicted very early on when they were starting out and and making all the wrong decisions. It's going to be a very slow death into irrelevance. It's not going to be a bang. It's going to be a whimper. They're going to die, not with a bang, but with a whimper. Mm -hmm. and Shame too. As as soon as as soon as that ha as soon as that happens. You're gonna you're going to see um, a lot of a lot of the people who came in just doing their own things and being far more successful. Because I guar I guarantee if if Austin Creed streams just for up up down down, he's gonna get a whole lot more views than he would doing anything on G4. Mm -hmm. The same thing goes with ev with everybody else. I mean, as much as I laugh at how Amaranth is not has been knocked off her perch as far as the most subscribed. Um, person on Twitch. The fa the fact of the matter is she's get she's gonna get more views doing her doing her thing on Twitch than she is 
with G4. That was, and for all I know, that could have been just a one shot. That could have been just a one shot. But the point is, we can definitely say that's the case with Iron Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> and as far as far as somebody like Sessler, uh, jury's out. I can't. I don't. I don't see a whole lot of people talking about the cesspool. Uh, he's he's mostly become irrelevant more than anything. Yeah, people don't care because he's he's the same he's always been. So there's nothing else to care about. And even even people who tr even and the of course the big the big problem is that he is that he's burned through a whole lot of the, whole lot of his own capital, and a lot of the other for, I'd say a lot of the other former G four crew would, ju would just focus on their own projects. Yeah. So, I do wish I, I do wish I could have been more optimistic about about the about the future, but the only way that they're going to have any optimism is if they blow it up and tr and reboot their reboot. And I think at that I think at that point somebody like Comcast would probably look at it as dead money. Yep. Rebooting it a second time so uh, soon after the first is not conducive to their their work plan. But that is go but that is going to be the coda for this. If there's any, I'd I'd say, th actually, I take it back. If, I'd say if we if there's any coda that we could utilize for what what is the lesson that can be learned from G4 and the fact that they um, recently rebranded their YouTube page to be X Play and their secondary channel to be um um. The, the 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 lesson learned here is one that we've preached before um but this is a really good exemplar of it know your audience know your performance space cater to both otherwise you're going to continue to be scrambling for relevance that i can go that i can go with all oh, there is to it And I mean, if I w if I wanted to be more more uh, vulgar about it, because I've had someone screaming at me on Twitter for the last hour and a half about how vulgar my responses are to people on our comment section. Um, don't be fuck nuggets. Yeah, some some people are like, oh, oh, how how vulgar? Can't you be can't you be a little bit nicer? We are being nice. Oh my. <laughs> I'll talk but, to you about it after afterwards, Monk. But that will do it for this um, impromptu, almost emergency episode of Geek Watch. We'll be back tomorrow with the Valley of the Judge, as well as a quick little interview with a returning friend of ours. But that is a story for another day. So until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, and... Join the watch. <laughs>